Hi, I'm Brad, and there's a hurricane outside. I am currently recording this video a couple weeks before Meta Connect, which is supposed to be their big unveiling of their higher end enthusiast or prosumer, uh, somewhat enterprise product known as the Quest Pro. And on this channel, we've done many leaks related to that device. Too many to count. It got boring. And one thing people always ask me is, well, what about Quest 3? Is there ever going to be any good leaks for that? And I said that, yeah, the leaks will start coming soon. I just didn't think they were going to be this big so fast. And this is a big one. So uh, sit tight. So Meta has publicly stated many times that they would have two uh, sort of tiers of product lines for VR, AR, MR, whatever you would like to call it. And basically the idea was they were going to iterate the high end and some of those features would come down to the low end. They are trying to keep certain price points at the same time as they iterate the device and hardware over time to sort of get the actual manufacturing lines and the technologies into products. And of course, this year is going to be the high end and next year it's slated to be the low end or the $400 type of area for the Quest 3. There's been multiple reports that this device was going to be called Stinson and today I got some incredible information and CAD images. Yes of the Quest 3 or also known as codenamed Stinson within Meta offices. Before I go on, please, if you want to support videos like this and you like it, click like, uh, click the subscribe button, go to bradsmells.com slash Patreon to support me financially so I can continue doing this, hopefully full time. All right, so I set up a whole uh, beautiful PowerPoint here and we are going to call this leak Hurricane Stinson because I am in Florida and there's a hurricane outside and hopefully it doesn't cut off my power while I record this video. It is going to be a Quest 3 HMD CAD inspection with some speculation and some details that I got from sources while asking about these CAD images itself. So let's hop right in. Now disclaimer, uh, this device is slated for next year. That is still what I've been told multiple times. Uh, I've said I've heard some people say mid next year, some people say late next year, but it is definitely seemingly coming out next year. And due to that, there can still be some minor changes that happen to the overall design of the hardware. I don't think we'll see anything major. I think what you're going to see here is mostly going to be all around the same because it takes years in advance to get these products rolling into manufacturing lines. But what you're going to see here is mostly final. Now, just a reminder that I was the person that leaked some CAD images back in June of the supposed Quest Pro or also known as Arcata or C-Cliff internally within Meta. And as you can see from a recent leak, a person found in a hotel that uh, those CAD images seem to line up with reality. So yeah, it should be pretty good and trustworthy for these kind of things by now, even though there was some recent stuff uh, related to the air link that got delayed, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video as a bonus thing. So Quest 3 Stinson, as I said earlier, is truly a love child of Quest Pro and Quest 2 hardware, but because it's going for the lower end Quest uh, device line, it is a consumer, and this is the important part, it is a consumer mixed reality device. And you're gonna see what I mean very quickly by mixed reality. So I know this is a very simple image to start off with, but it will get very detailed very fast. But I want to point out some of the first things on the outside that you can notice right away. First thing is the Quest uh, 3 will be keeping the sort of soft strap that the Quest 2 has, which means uh, companies like Bobo and other companies like that who have made a lot of money for people who have been upgrading their straps because the default strap is an uncomfortable mess due to the front heavy nature of the Quest 2. It is going to return with Quest 3 most likely, and that also means the battery is going to be stored in the front again. There is not a back battery, but we'll talk about weight distribution. It will be a little bit better than Quest 2, but again, not in the back, which is not as good. But in the other case, if you like upgrading headbands, um, it is not going to be a unibody design that won't stop you from being able to do that, such as the Quest Pro and the Pico 4, which seem to be both very unibody and not upgradable in that fashion. Now, what you can also see here is that there's some differences of where they put some of the ports and it's really kind of interesting design uh, within the actual head strap in the actual uh, where, where you would kind of clip things off. They actually put both the USB-C ports and the headphone jack within there. So you will probably have to change out some of those old straps um, whenever the Quest 3 comes and companies will salivate with that information from third parties whenever we get closer to that event. Now let's talk about the mixed reality concepts I was talking about earlier in this video and hinted to it. Um, of course, this is very similar to the Quest Pro. They are going to have two Canyon cameras on the sides as focused on 60 OF tracking. 
But also on the front, there is a four camera array with a depth sensor focused on mixed reality. Now, this is really shocking because a lot of companies, uh, a, lot, a lot of talks have not really talked about how they would be bringing mixed reality to the consumer product line. It's mostly been kind of hints that that would stay on the pro tier. But uh, I think some changes in the market and what expectations of what some other companies like Apple might do is causing uh, Facebook to want to push into getting more developers to focus on building mixed reality experiences than some of the other features that Quest Pro is, will have. And I'll get into that in a moment. So yeah, the four camera array, uh, you can also kind of see there is a two Canyon, two Teton, and one depth sensor. You can unpeel that, and there you go. Uh, again, you can just see all over here, there's just two cameras per pill here, and then a depth projector and depth sensor in the middle. Not much to say, it's going to be uh, half black and white, half color again. It seems They seem to be doing very well with that color overlay software experience that they've been uh, iterating on for Quest Pro. In fact, I saw some videos released by Zuckerberg today on uh, pretty much they've been getting much faster at that overlaying over time compared to some previous demos they've showed off to the public, even though they are still censoring the Quest Pro front plate, which is pretty hilarious to me. Uh, I heard from my sources that uh, they are currently using RealSense technology in the Quest 3 right now. This could change, but right now they're pretty uh, they're pretty happy with the RealSense technology. And there's actually been a lot of proof in firmware uh, earlier on found by uh, Samulia that there was actually some internal Oculus drivers that were referring to the Intel RealSense uh, depth camera and, and depth recording and depth mapping software which is very uh, also interesting because RealSense, I believe they've completely kind of stopped with the uh, with them selling uh, B2C. So it seems like maybe Oculus might pick up on that and bring it back to consumers with their own sort of twist. As I said, this device is a love child and a cord sort of cut down of Quest Pro. And you can see all the differences in the similarities of the cameras here between the Quest Pro on the top left and the uh, Stinson Quest 3 on the bottom right. Just very similar. It's just a uh, different layout and probably making things cheaper because more cameras, more orders makes all the cost of components go down over time. Now, here is a big surprise that shocked me. Uh, this device is not slated or have any plans. And I was told this by my sources that they are actually not going to include eye or face tracking within the Quest 3 device or at least the Stinson model. Um, my belief is that the reason they're doing that is that the current Quest Pro, actually the eye and face tracking, the way they're doing it is very expensive because they're trying to get the most high fidelity uh, experience out of it. And they're using five cameras, one for each eye and then three for the actual face tracking, upper face, lower face to actually do that. And because the XR2's camera limit, uh, they have to run all that camera data through an extra chip that is very expensive, adds a lot of cost. And I think uh, even though Zuckerberg has publicly stated that he would love all the devices to have eye and face tracking, I think Ameta again realized that it's probably more important right now to bring mixed reality development uh, faster rather than just implementing eye and face tracking into actual consumer devices. So. Big focus on AR and VR here, not a big focus on social experiences, which will probably be uh, pushed toward the higher end devices. And as again, these things get cheaper, uh, newer chips might have more uh, camera bandwidth. But for now, big surprise, no IR face tracking built into Quest 3 from the current prototype images we're seeing here. Uh, what is not a surprise is they are going to be adopting pancake lenses. I know Pico Forb had a big deal and big surprise about them uh, selling at 429 euros with pancake lenses, very large ones. And it's even cheaper in the Chinese market. It's around 360 euros. That, that's a conversion. And that does include tax. So they're going to be doing very well in the China market where Meta can't sell. But yes, uh, Quest 3 is planned to have pretty much the same exact pancake lenses that is being put into Quest Pro, as you can see here. Not much to say. It's... Uh, going to allow the weight distribution to be better, even though it is going to be a little bit front heavy with the battery in the front, it's going to be not as bad. Now due to this factor, you'll also notice that they're probably going to actually be using two LCD displays. And the way their layout uh, is very, again, similar to the Quest Pro. And I also, this is speculation, I didn't get any information yet on this, but they're probably also counter rotating displays at 21 degrees because I was told previously they were doing that in Quest Pro to get a little more edge out of FOV, but also to get cheaper costs out of the lenses. 
the Pico lenses are humongous, and that's probably how they get their bigger FOV. But I think uh, Meta is trying to do some tricks to cut costs and make things more affordable. Um, there's probably a difference of qualities between these lenses that don't even have to do with FOV. But yes, I, I really do speculate that they're going to also do counter rotation because they're already building all the software and reprojection technology probably to uh, get ready for that. And you can kind of also see here, there is an IPD adjust wheel. It's in, uh, there's other images on the front where you can actually see that it is an actual wheel that you rotate and that is going to be able to make the IPD uh, go further or not one single display with a very limited IPD range, which is good. I'm glad they're finally going back to something we've had as a standard since 2016, but was kind of went backwards back when the Quest 2 came out. Now, here's another interesting thing. Uh, we've talked recently about how uh, there was a lot of hints and, and sources telling me that the Quest 2 would have support for the Quest Pro controllers at some point. Uh, even though those controllers would only charge with the dock and the Quest 2 does not. It only can charge with the USB-C port. The interesting thing here is you can see there's three uh, contacts here that is the same contacts as used to charge the Quest Pro HMD onto the dock itself. So this device will probably be compatible with the Quest Pro's charging dock. And because they're doing a lot of work on making the uh, Oculus Quest Pro controllers work with Quest 2, whether or not that actually comes to market, I think it's likely that they're going to try to do that as well for this device, but that's speculation. <laughs> uh, there's a volume slider here, nothing special. And there are the speaker grills on the both left and right sides. Uh, they look a little bit larger and in a different positioning than the Quest 2. Now I wanted to pull up this image because uh, one of the things that the Quest Pro was slated to have was to have two fans that actually cool the device and allow the uh, specialized version of XR2 Gen 1, kind of like a 1.5 going to be in the Quest Pro device, uh, cool better, uh, have more RAM and basically try to clock it higher than what the Quest True is with the single fan and the underclocked uh, chip. Now, I wanted to bring this up from iFixit because if you look here and compare it to the actual uh, Quest 3 design, it seems they will be going with a single fan design again but they are going to be using a newer chip, but we'll talk a little bit about that near the end of this uh, presentation, which is right now. <laughs> yeah, final comments on Stinson 2023. Uh, the chip inside will be a Qualcomm XR2 Generation 2. Again, this is the full leap forward that we've uh, been kind of hoping for would happen for a while. Uh, I did a whole video about this recently on my channel uh, about this showing up in actual, or at least developer test platforms showing up in import records, similar to how the uh, SXR 2150P was, which is the chips slated to be in Quest Pro. And the project is called Project Holiday for this new chip, uh, which is funny because again, Holiday is a reference to Ready Player One. Um, I was told by sources that I and face tracking features will primarily be focused on Pro HMDs right now. And I, again, it's likely to do those expensive chips that are required to handle all that camera bandwidth. And uh, one interesting thing is I was told that the SSD and RAM might tear up to uh, 512 gigabytes or 12 gigabytes of RAM as well. Um, again, these are the things that can change very easily over time. But for now, this is things being mentioned and talked about within uh, internally. Now, one final thing I want to bring up has nothing to do. Well, I shouldn't say nothing to do with Quest 3, but uh, a lot of people have been asking me about the uh, Air Link dock and dongle. Uh, I made a whole video about that, and unfortunately, some of those things got delayed um, because there was some issue related to version 44, and they, they pretty much prioritized getting that fixed before they rolled out the actual gatekeeper and experience. But that uh, little Air dongle is a little bit more important than we realize. It is really, truly Meta's first uh, glimpse into jumping into cloud VR. I know I've talked about this a lot. And this was uh, something I've been told from my sources. I'm just going to read this out so you can understand what Meta's plans are for getting higher tier content on a uh, lower powered standalone device without requiring an expensive PC. So Project Razor is the partnership between Meta and US-based ISP MNOs such as Verizon, AT&T, and others to help build connectivity improvements and get the internet metaverse ready. Meta US Play testers will begin testing cloud streaming VR with Lone Echo, Beat Saber, and Horizon Worlds this week. 
This is one of the reasons they uh, actually aligned the, the D-Link and the V44 Cloud VR ship dates that I said in my last video. Uh, Meta is trying to get a baseline for streamed XR performance and experiences from a Meta Edge network. Basically what a, an Edge network is, is when a cloud connects to a PC and that PC streams that cloud content to your he headset. Um, that, that, that's what an Edge thing is. And this dongle would enable an Edge network. And after the playtest, Meta will open up to internal employee dog fooding in the US and the EU. Again, that's employees. They're, they're doing private playtests and employees. Um, the goal for this phase is to in turn help first party content developers experiment with cloud enabled and cloud first content to create experiences that would be otherwise impossible to do with the limited compute on an HMD, a standalone HMD. Sorry for hitting that. Uh, the results from this phase will define the cloud VR slash avalanche roadmap for 2023 and beyond. And the next planned phase afterwards is called OffNet. Uh, Meta will test CloudLink over 5G cellular networks using mobile edge computes. And this will run on uh, AWS Wavelength. They will also validate Ion face tracking performance using Horizon, VRChat, and Codec avatars. A lot of information about cloud stuff that Meta is very serious about. And I have a feeling the main reason they're very serious about this all of a sudden is the PS, uh, the PS2 v or PS VR2, sorry, uh, has been showing off a lot of content that has been making a lot of the standalone content and a lot of the people who have been covering standalone content in Quest 2 very excited for this high fidelity experiences that the Quest 2 just can't do alone. Um, I, this might be why they're pivoting so hard on cloud VR. Um, and the most interesting thing is they're actually saying in this, uh, this, this source is actually saying here that they want their first parties to actually look into developing high fidelity experiences using this cloud service. Very interesting. I'm very curious how they're going to handle the whole PC ecosystem or the new UI that needs to be updated for the PC uh, cloud stuff to work. But um, yeah, and, and then one more thing to note is they also mentioned codec avatars. Um, the actual standalone hardware within the Quest Pro will not be able to render codec avatars at all. Um, it's just not, you need a lot more power for that. Uh, Meta has shown off some custom chips they made that would work together with the XR2, for example. But even then, uh, they struggle getting 30 FPS on those high fidelity codec avatars. So cloud streaming is currently their plans probably to make alleviate that and allow the uh, high fidelity realistic avatars that they are so obsessed with making. Very cool stuff. We'll see how this goes. I mean, Meta Connect is in uh, less than two weeks. I'll be streaming it and hopefully we have a lot of fun talking about it and see if they even mention Stinson. <laughs> I don't know if they will. Maybe they'll show some teaser images, but we have the whole thing pretty much leaked now. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you want to support me again, go to bradsmells.com slash Patreon. I want to thank all these uh, patrons that have actually been supporting me at $25 plus uh, a month it allows me to do this continually and i really appreciate it um yeah awesome people thank you so much um and that's it that's it i'm going to uh now edit this video and <laughs> enjoy the hurricane noises help